Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FY22 earnings conference call of Vmart Retail, hosted by Motilal Oswal Financial Services. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ali Asghar Sakin from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Steven. Uh, good morning, everyone. On behalf of Motilal Oswal, we welcome you to Q3FI22 earnings conference call of Vmart Retail Limited. On the call, we have with us Mr. Lalit Agarwal, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Anand Agarwal, the CFO of the company. Uh, let me hand over the floor to Mr. Lalit Agarwal for his opening remarks, post which we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, Lalitji. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the conference call. Thank you for being here. Thank you, uh, Ali, uh, uh, for hosting us. And uh, uh, very, very good times. Uh, uh, the, uh, the sun is once again shining bright. Uh, we could see a clear sky. Uh, we could really, uh, we hope, uh, Think move uh, uh, move in the, in the right direction, uh, uh, especially in the northern part of India. We are able to see a very, very beautiful uh, uh, little chill as well as uh, the sunshine, uh, which gives us a very good hope also that the the, the, the good times are back, and then we could we could expect much more coming uh, from the from what what was what was so so to call uh, uh, squeezed in this last few years because of all the external environment. Uh, so uh, we hope uh, that the economy is, is, is uh, recovering. Uh, the consumption is coming back. Uh, we are seeing that happening. Uh, we really got a little excited in the in the in the last quarter as well. Uh, we saw uh, in the in the consumption space. Uh, so there is some uh, uh, both the sides we are able to see. Uh, on on one side we are definitely able to see all those people who did not consume for uh, last one one and a half years. Uh, since the first COVID hit in the March, uh, they all remained uh, in the in the country. They never went out. The tourism went low. People who used to shop outside did not shop outside. Uh, people who used to come out to shopping in the malls and, and and the streets they didn't come out. So uh, most of the people remained home. Most of the people who could have worked from home worked from home, and that also impacted the the consumption. Uh, but yeah, in the last quarter, I think uh, the the fear came out and people. Largely, learned people is what I call, uh, and people who 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 are in this uh, what we call the urban centers and the bigger cities, they all came out to shop. They all came out. We could we could hear things. We could hear news on on you know the long long queues in the malls and long queues outside the shopping complexes, and that that came in because till quarter two we did not see that coming out very much in open. In Q3, large part of that came out. Compared to that, uh, in the rural or in the semi-urban side, which is tier two, tier three towns, we saw the things as similar because even Q2 people came out uh, because people the, the fear factor came uh, went down right in the month of July and August, and and uh, people were uh, already there to consume, so people came out slowly, but still there is some some kind of impact which we could see even on their income, uh, on their uh, uh, potentiality to spend. Uh, inflation is definitely. Uh, uh, hurting their pockets. There is a there is a uh, lower spending as well. We could watch uh, in the in the smaller part of the economy or in the lower part of the economy and also in the in the smaller town, uh, which is visible. Uh, especially, I could see those kind of customer segment who earn between uh, twenty to forty thousand rupees. There is a small dip in the in the kind of consumption that they would have done and they would do. So that's what we are <coughs> noticing. Uh, we are also seeing uh, a differentiated news coming in from uh, both the competitive world as well as our own world. And uh, we are seeing people who have large part of operations in, in the bigger cities, in malls, have been benefited in this particular quarter. Uh, there is a good benefit coming in in this particular quarter from them because of the similar thought process, because the consum their consumer came back in heavy numbers. They all consumed with in India. They all cut the consumption all uh, you know, accumulated here. There was a long due pending consumption which came in. So very very good uh, and celebrating news for 
for most of our retailer friends and and uh, things have been good on those lines even we experience similarly in in certain stores which are uh, more in the urban centers as well as in uh, uh, some some southern india unlimited stores that we have in the malls as well so uh, uh, primarily what i what i want to convey is you know uh, things are coming back to normal uh, we are looking at uh, better better side of the consumption there is definitely uh, uh, still there is some pressure and the pressure is getting escalated uh, because of the inflation there is an inflation in our raw material prices our cost of products our asps have gone up uh, some some is due to inflation others due to selection so so there is a rise in the average selling price of the product uh, in the industry uh, so there is uh, one good thing which happened that you know gst uh, which was supposed to get uh, from 5% to 12% uh, at the last moment the government took a very good call and thanks to the the establishment for that uh, on, on they did not go ahead with the with the gst rate increase and it was curbed at 5% uh, below 1000 rupees of uh, asp of product so so uh, that is a good boon and that's a benefit that we got but yes our, our new merchandise that we were ordered uh, came in with those kind of uh, you know extra mrp and then we we still wait because there is another meeting going to come in in the next quarter so otherwise uh, cotton prices continues to rise uh, overall commodity prices continues to rise overall there is a, a rise in the fuel prices energy prices uh, job market employment market is very very tight we can see a very huge churn in, in that particular side in i in a, uh, particularly in vmart we did not notice so much of churn but still the pressure is there uh, there is a there is a huge demand for both the corporate side of the employees as well as the uh, front end side of employees and uh, that's good news for the economy that's a very very good news for the economy that means that business is back to normal that means people are investing more money into the business and that will definitely mean a much more better uh, year for us coming forward uh, we are uh, focusing uh, very very uh, sharply on on both the sides uh, on our existing store on our on our new acquisition that we had in the south, south india unlimited space we are uh, you know we only acquired four months back uh, we are slowly and gradually taking control of the operations understanding about the customer segment we still continue with the continue the same brand Our our fresh range of merchandise, which is Vmart merchandise, has started getting launched on the uh, on the on the shop floor on those lines. So we 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 should see some result coming in in the in the coming quarters, and and we should also uh, we should that there will be a lot of learning that we will have from there. We are also focusing uh, similarly and heavily on on the online space in the in the in the e-commerce channels, uh, both uh, in our own dot com Vmart retail dot com. as well as <clears throat> we have launched ourselves in the mentra uh, in, in amazon and mentra where we are our products are placed and we have to we start selling there as well so <clears throat> as of now the investment is 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 happening in, in that particular space uh, acquiring those digital customers uh, or or uh, uh, sustaining that platform uh, uh, building that tech uh, investing on the tech investing in the in the people to manage those uh, tech there is a fixed cost which is there and uh, uh, we also continue to Uh, you know consolidate our operations in our existing territory there are stores which uh, which are doing great uh, but there are few stores which we are which we are struggling to uh, to become profitable and we we have taken some calls on certain of those stores maybe we would give uh, the plan to uh, close down some seven to eight stores in this particular quarter so so that you know uh, we don't uh, we don't carry on stores which are not able to come up so that's our, our uh, and that has been our principle always that every store which is ebitda positive is something that will continue will work with those stores for a year and six months and if those doesn't perform we'll try to not not get married with those those properties so so that's what we are doing we continue to open our new stores we 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 have our plans in place uh, some some plans got got uh, diluted because of the of the covid situation in the in the india part uh, omicron uh, uh, we came out of omicron very well Uh, definitely there was an impact which got created towards the end of december and and the full of january uh, there was some impact in football lot of government brought in a lot of regulations wherein normal operations was hindered uh, weekend operations were hindered evening operations were hindered but still this time uh, thankfully the government and the, all the all the administration did not take any extreme measures we, we definitely expect uh, uh, things uh, to 
normalized and it has normalized now as we are in february things have normalized almost 95% of the locations we are getting the business is getting back to normal and and, and the operations are getting back to normal we are able to receive footfalls now in the stores as well uh, apart from that i think uh, one of the biggest state uh, where we operate uh, uttar pradesh uh, is, is uh, undergoing election we are very excited about it uh, because elections there has been a lot of growth activities which has gone in uttar pradesh in the, in the last year and and uh, uh, that should continue a lot of spending by political parties is supposed to happen during this election period a lot of activity will also disrupt some businesses uh, in, in in the current period because you we all know that whenever there is a election going on there are rallies and there are there are political disturbances which also get created and religious disturbances which get created there may be some disturbances in particular territories but otherwise the economy is going to get, become better for uttar pradesh people are going to spend more they'll get more money and they'll spend more overall we expect uttar pradesh business to go up in the coming years and that that's what our expectation is but yeah overall uh, uh, the business will come back and and we should expect we are working towards a towards a growth in the in the coming quarter and we will we will see that coming in this particular quarter uh, 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 i mean we should expect a good holi also coming in the month of march this particular quarter uh, may not be a great but but otherwise we expect the the, the forecast forward year uh, should be better and the, the best year in the last 3 4 years is what we expect uh, to happen anyway I, I, we will take your questions but but i'll first of all hand over to uh, anand for giving you the deep insights into the numbers uh, anand please anand please thank you lalit and good morning everybody it's been a very good quarter uh, good festive demand and uh, i would say a very strong consumer pent up Uh, but first, let me take you through some of the financial highlights from the quarter, and then we can open the house for questions. So, quarter three, as we all know, is historically the biggest quarter for us, and uh, as it is a congregation of a strong festive period, you know, Durga Puja, Dashera, Diwali, and Chhat, the biggest festivals in all our markets, a vibrant marriage season, and also uh, it starts the you know the onset of winters. despite a late start and a weak pujo in october we saw very strong november due to a very high level of pent up demand and a strong diwali and marriage season uh, november in fact became the highest sales month for us ever uh, with the south region also contributing very heavily in the overall growth with almost no covid related restrictions and the heightened trust of customers in the safe and hygienic environment at vmart stores the customer footfalls also uh, recovered almost uh, to pre covid levels uh, while at a overall quarter basis the full footfall recovery for the vmart business was around 85% uh, uh, while it remained only 57% for the southern region uh, as uh, lalit also mentioned in his opening remarks uh, the, the initial part of the quarter did not see a lot of footfalls in the malls but i think in the latter part we saw very strong footfalls coming in in uh, in the bigger towns so while at an overall level the quarter sales grew by 47% year on year but on a comparable basis excluding the contribution of the 74 unlimited stores the sales grew by 23% year on year dual uh, unlimited business contributed to 17% of the total sales mix uh, with quarter 3 also being the biggest quarter for the south and west region the total sales for vmart excluding unlimited also exceeded pre covid levels by 4% while the l2l or the ssg still remained at minus 9% for the vmart business the average selling price for the quarter grew by 12% while the average bill size also grew by a healthy 13% reflecting the impact of uh price increase uh, which was put in to mitigate the impact uh, of the you know the cotton uh, yarn price increase and also the higher asp mix that we got from the unlimited base on the margin side the gross profit for the quarter improved by 30 basis points despite the significant increase in cotton yarn prices and its impact on product costing this was made possible by passing on the full impact of the price increase on to the consumer and also lower discounting coming on to expenses uh, this has definitely been one of the most challenging quarter with a full blown impact of very high inflationary pressures uh, whether it was on the raw material side or manpower costs or any other costs 
there were very limited savings on rentals as there were no material covid concession available in the current year as compared to last year similarly the people cost also went up significantly as we filled in all vacant positions from last year to prepare for normal sales and also at an overall level uh, we started preparing for a full normal you know future time uh, higher marketing spend coupled with a higher cost base inherited in unlimited uh, also impacted this uh, the total expense and therefore the total cost went up by 76% for the quarter this compares also to a very low cost base of last year in the same quarter where we had significantly cut down on all costs including travel rental you know low hiring and all other discretionary costs on a go forward basis the unlimited business will still have slightly disproportionate cost structure especially since the rental alone there are almost twice the vmart average but we are aiming to normalize this in the coming quarters by increasing the productivity in terms of sales throughput and also through opening of new stores at the lower vmart cost structures in the coming quarters which should help us bring the overall cost percentage down in a phased manner for the south business also as of now all cost structures are fully back to pre covid level of operations with no covid related savings available as a net result of the sales growing by 47% margins increasing by 30 basis points and the total expenses going up by 76% the quarter ended with an increase in ebitda by 30% on the cash flow side we remain uh, very comfortable on the overall cash position no major capex in the quarter apart from opening of nine new stores and some other store refurbishments all the future major capex items remains uh, the same new store expansion which uh, are expected to be in the region of 10 to 12 stores in the this quarter and then probably 50 uh, to 55 stores for the next year and then again in the next year we will start construction on the new warehouse site which should entail some uh, you know big ticket uh, capex on the inventory side uh, at 546 crores uh, we remain in very very comfortable range this includes 109 crores of stocks uh, in the south uh, unlimited business and 437 crores for rest of india inventory days came in at 74 for the quarter while the full year number still looks optically high at 111 days due to lower throughput in the covid impacted first and second quarters uh the online business continues to grow uh, although still on a small base uh, with availability on vmartretail.com uh, ios android and now also on amazon and mintra the contribution mix from online has grown to roughly around 1.5% uh, but we continue to build this business towards a 5% revenue mix in the coming 2 to 3 years aided by hyper local delivery and lower cost to service made by customers The online business as of now still requires investment as the setup cost cataloging cost apart from the marketing cost and the logistics which remain traditionally high uh, especially given the low asps of our product but we continue to remain very bullish on this channel and shall uh, keep investing to make it a meaningful part of our overall business within the next 2 years this business still entails a fixed expense of roughly around 1.5 crores per, per month on the new store expansion plans we remain uh, uh, optimistic to keep expanding so far this year we have opened 25 new stores acquired 74 stores and closed down four stores and thus stand at a net tally of 374 stores as at december end uh, for the current quarter we should be looking to open at least 10 to 12 more stores uh, while uh, we may close down around 6 to 7 more stores uh, one out of which uh, is in south india similar uh, new store opening uh, you know new store uh, opening activity should also start pretty soon in south india coming to the last part on unlimited uh, on the unlimited integration things have been progressing as per plan and all stores uh, were operational under the vmart billing system right from 1st september without any challenges the early signs in the last 4 months uh, look very positive the team in south india remains very strong and is ensuring a very speedy recovery uh, on sales and also the transition we continue to strengthen the product offering in the unlimited ecosystem by filling in gaps of missing categories and also sharpening the product pricing by combining the product offering for both the brands and geographies the unlimited business is already profitable 
although at a slightly lower scale as compared to Vmart, owing to the high operating cost structures, but we are targeting to bring the profitability at 7 to 8% EBITDA level in the next two years as part of a phased uh, progression plan. We shall be sharing more details on the unlimited PL structures as the business uh, completes at least one year of full business cycle. But till then, I think uh, we should be patient and just uh, bear with us to make this uh, transition much, much more successful. So that's all from my side, and I now request uh, Ali to open the house for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Bharat Choda from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir, uh, I had a query regarding our uh, ASP. It's like ASP has gone up by 10 to 12 percent, and uh, the recovery has also been uh, like around uh, 4 percent positive. And uh, has this impacted our volumes uh, owing to the high inflation? And how do we look at the scenario going forward? So the uh, the recovery definitely is in uh, while you are comparing two different numbers for two different financial years. So the uh, the ASPs have gone up from previous year, uh, but yes, your point remains absolutely valid. There is a, a slight impact on volumes, but so far it is not very stark. Uh, for the coming uh, you know uh, seasons and the coming year, uh, our estimation is that the inflationary pressure will continue to remain, and we should not rule out any further price increases. And thereby, our estimation is that the ASPs might might go up still uh, a bit further from here. Uh, they, as of now, there is no very major or material impact on the volumes, but uh, we are building in a slight, uh, you know, decline in the volumes for the next year uh, from a planning perspective. Okay, and sir, uh, on the unlimited brand, uh, are we planning to open more stores for the unlimited brand? And uh, what is the current level that we are making on the beta on uh, for the unlimited? So, uh, yes, uh, we are already scouting for properties in South India, and uh, there is a plan to open at least uh, 5 to 10 stores in the next 12 months in uh, India. Uh, uh, my guess is that in the first quarter itself, we should see some star store openings in uh, you know southern and western regions. Uh, what is the second point on the question? Sir, it was regarding uh, what is the current uh, beta margin that we are making for the unlimited brand and our outlook on that? So as of now, actually, because it's just been four months, uh, and these last three four months have been pretty good uh, as far as the you know the business cycle or the seasonal cycle for that business is concerned. So we have not uh, currently disclosed the you know the profitability numbers. Suffice to say that this business remains uh, you know profitable, and we are hoping to reach uh, EBITDA level of at least uh, you know five to six percent in the next financial year. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot for taking my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sirish Pardesi from Centrum Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon and uh, strong set of numbers. So uh, I have three questions. Uh, first is that uh, we have seen a footfall which has gone up, but the conversion rates have come down. So any any qualitative comment uh, how this is uh, one should look at in our core markets uh, like UP Bihar? Because so you did say that, that there were a lot of activities uh, in, around Diwali and we have seen, but uh, doesn't come with the numbers. Yeah, hi, Hirish. Good morning. So you are absolutely right, uh, and what you see is also right. Because see, are, now this time you will have to all all see uh, with one more lens. Because unlimited business also integrated in this business, and everything that we are seeing is definitely along with unlimited. So if you see the conversion as well as the ASP, 
the ASP is at a height because uh, the, the, the unlimited ASP, the unlimited businesses, original ASP, is right now at, at a high level, which is impacting the overall ASP of our business. Plus, the conversion right now there is also very low. So that is also impacting us. Anyway, uh, uh, we have seen a, both a drop in the footfall and little <coughs> drop in the conversion, but our average bill value has gone up. And our, our uh, UPT, which is a limit per transaction, has also gone up. So people have bought a little more. They did not do multiple billing. They did not come multiple number of times. That's what I have done. Okay. Uh, my second uh, question is that uh, uh, traditionally we have a very high saliency coming from the quarter three. And I think the numbers are very impressive. However, it is not reflected into the gross margin. And the gross margin has improved only 30 basis points, uh, despite we have taken price increases. So how one should look at, uh, I mean, in a medium to long term, I mean, if you can help me to understand what is the quantum of price increase we have taken and also which which would have gone in the month of January or February and how we should look at the gross margin for the company in the uh, next uh, two to three quarters. So, Sesh, uh, uh, you are absolutely right. And uh, uh, as, as our policies are, we have not focused very highly on the gross margin side. And we never do that. But as of now, in these periods, uh, our, our, uh, you know, our focus is also uh, because you have not seen a very healthy period in the last one and a half years, and there has been a lot of failures. So there is definitely also a pressure that would have come on the inventory, and we did not want our inventory to get aged. So we have taken very conscious call in also diluting and then discounting and liquidating inventory which are of no not required. So we have taken all those measured calls because the freshness of the inventory has to be also maintained. So that's the important piece that we have done because you know all those inventory which was bought in 2019 Diwali after the Diwali and Dashera, those inventories because we, we did not get a very ample chance to sell in the 2020 years. That is why those inventories were also something which were there in the world. And we started discounting, we, we gave a lot of discounts on those inventory as well. And we should see a healthy margin because whatever price increase that we have done, we have not encashed anything extra. We have not taken anything as a part of our margin piece. We only increase the prices to the level so that our cost of raw material prices increase uh, could have been met. That's the overall thing that we did. One quick follow-up, uh, Laliji. Uh, what is the OSS contribution uh, in this quarter? OSS contribution changes? You, you, you said that you have done uh, some discounting. So what is that portion uh, which you would have achieved from that? I think slightly above normal, but primarily it is normal. See, we did not do a lot of discounting, but yes, we had to liquidate, so we had to give some deep <coughs> discounting on those so that we don't end up having those inventory results. That's the whole problem. Okay. Uh, my my next question is on unlimited. <clears throat> uh, and it's too early to ask for financial, but strictly from the modeling perspective, uh, uh, what we note uh, from the uh, financial result that you said that you have now taken over 64 stores uh, agreement. Uh, does that mean that we will close 10 stores uh, uh, in uh, unlimited? And maybe if you can, if not EBITDA, at least tell us what is the gross margin. This is purely from the modeling purpose because almost 17% contribution has come in this quarter from unlimited stores and for uh, full year it is about 12%. So it is it is an important piece. So, I mean, I would, I would request everyone, see, the, the fundamental, uh, I, I'll just give you a small brief. The fundamental gross margin that we have in unlimited is right now if you higher, we are operating at almost 8 to 8% 8 higher gross margin in unlimited versus VMAT. And similarly, the, the cost is almost 11 to 12% higher, 12% uh, or more higher than the uh, VMAT cost that we had. So overall, if you understand, so the the, the beta would be would be almost five, I mean four to five percent, four percent less than our our beta, four to five percent less than our beta. That's the model that you could you could make it for yourself. That's really helpful, Laliji. My last question is on uh, you earlier were holding a position of chairman and managing director, but what you see the latest announcement, Mr. Mundra is now appointed as a chairman, and now you have become MD. What is the thought process? Is that you are not comfortable and you want to have a quick hands-on uh, for turnaround of unlimited stores? I mean, 
give me give me some understanding what is it that you feel that you need to be in charge uh, of the company so mr pandesi at least let me relax for some moment man come on if i have got a good opportunity and if i am able to handle over someone please let me relax no i i understand <laughs> so uh, i i see the point of view is uh, very clear that we want to uh, create our organization as the best governance organization and that should be the best governance board and to to look at those perspectives we have always relied on bringing in the best governance practices and the best governance practices suggest that one person should not hold two chairs and because i am in the in the in the helm of my business i have i am i am uh, i am the ceo and the managing director so i have to look at the operations and the and the business as such so we 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 definitely wanted and to have a separate seat uh, available and and i thought Uh, having it with the independent director, making our board a little more dynamic and more better is, is always a good thing, and that and that makes me more focused on my on my areas of managing as a managing director on on the on the business operation, and it also gives us a very good you know transparency at the board level and and much more better board environment. So that is how we've taken a right call, and we believe this is a very good thing that we have done. Thank you, Lalitji. I really admire uh, giving away uh, the the power. I think that's one of the thing I really like, and I really appreciate uh, this gesture. Thank you. All Thank the best, you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ankit Kedia from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, so I have three questions. My first question is, uh, you know, Anandji, in your opening remarks, you mentioned, you know, 50 to 55 new store edition for next year. Uh, isn't that, you know, below our guidance of 20 to 25 percent space edition? uh which we normally talk of so uh hi ankit so that number uh, uh is right now pegged at 50 to 55 and there would be there might be some more additions that we will look at looking at the you know, south india directory and there may be five or 10 stores which might also come up there but yes you are right our original uh, estimates usually uh, you know work around 20% and we have not given up that uh but these are numbers that we are we can say with more certainty and with more conviction that these are definitely that uh, you know these sites on which work uh, is happening or will happen so this 5055 is purely for north and the 5 to 10% which you have guided for unlimited in next two year will be addition to that or this 5055 includes that so as of now it should be you know a total of around 60 that is what we are looking at and uh, if there is more we will definitely keep everybody updated sure my second question is regarding rebranding of unlimited you know with the new stores now uh, uh, you know on cards in unlimited uh, would the new stores be on vmart branding and slowly next 6 months the old stores will also be you know rebranded to vmart given that the inventory of vmart is now also in the system or that is still some time away So Ankit, let me take this question. Uh, we are still in the process of understanding the customer and understanding the brand uh, strength uh, of Unlimited right now in that market. We are not taking a hasty decision because anyway there is a lot of disturbance because of COVID which has happened to the to the market, and we don't want to give another jerk to that brand. So so we have we have appointed a marketing agency to understand and and take some customer survey, do some. uh do some uh, uh, you know one on one with some lot of customers and take in to give us those feedback and then only we'll go ahead till that time whatever stores open in those states we'll go ahead with the similar name uh, which is unlimited thanks and my last question is regarding competition you know with raw material price inflation nearly 15 to 20% or do you think uh, you know organized players like us are in a stronger footing compared to unorganized players uh who you know would face challenges in vendor payments uh, or buying uh, procuring raw material in bulk or you know getting it stitched uh, uh so we are better off compared to competition organized and market share gain uh, could be much higher for us in the medium term yeah uh, get that is uh, always the case that will always happen whenever there are there are uh, no uh, swings in the market whenever there are there is not a consistent approach in the market and when whenever these things are occur where uh, the manufacturer tend to take more benefit or the manufacturer is not capable enough to deliver in the right product so uh, in that case all those 
uh, unorganized mom and pop shop which whose potentiality to buy or or impact the vendor is very low get squeezed and then get uh, difficult in a difficult position today is the is the you know sellers market today is the manufacturers market is what i would call out for because there is too many things happening in this industry there are too many players which have jumped into this industry i also want everyone to get aware of this that both from b2b as well as b2c online as well as offline there is lot of activity which is happening in the market which whether they are making profits or whether they are able to create a business for themselves or not but they are definitely disrupting the market on the supply and the manufacturing side so there is some amount of pressure which is getting built on the market on the seller and that is definitely you know, go into all those little less capable retailers or or sellers who 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 may not be able to negotiate well with the with the suppliers so that this is a very very dynamic situation and we will we wish we, we give them the best of hope we could support wherever we could but still i think there is definitely going to be a, a difficult times for the organized players that's very really helpful sir thank you so much and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of percy pantaki from iifl please go ahead uh hi sir uh, uh you mentioned that uh, the cost for unlimited is higher by about 7 to 12 percent so just wanted to understand the reason for that why is uh, the cost higher and uh, is uh, in which particular uh, line item is it higher hi parshit uh, so the costs are uh, typically high more uh, you know on the rental side i think uh, the average rental that gmart is used to is roughly around 35 to 37 rupees per square feet uh, while on an average the per square feet rental on an average in um, uh, you know unlimited business is roughly around 60 to 65 rupees so that is a straight uh, you know 100% jump and uh, apart from that i think uh, the other uh, in terms of the running and administrative cost uh, whether it is in terms of manpower or you know per uh, unit manpower cost or uh, uh, even the establishment cost is also on the higher side uh, given the fact that uh, uh, some of these stores are also in malls uh, there is a higher overhead in terms of cam and other uh, you know stuff which takes the overall cost structure a bit high but having said that i think the bigger point uh, uh, that we are working on is not really to uh, you know bring down the cost but to increase the throughput which is the sales per square feet which currently is at a uh, even pre covid times it was you know roughly around 50% of uh, what we might used to achieve and that is where is the big opportunity area so our thought and uh, plan is to increase that throughput by at least 20 30% uh, uh, and thereby mitigate the cost pressure understood secondly uh, just a question on the price increases out of the 47% uh, sales growth that you have done this quarter how much of it can be attributed to price increases so price increase uh, perceived would have been in the range of around uh, you know 7 to 10% uh, so uh, while it is not you know uh, across every line item every product but yes it would be safe to assume uh, you know roughly around uh, uh, 8 to 10% impact coming in because of the mrp increase okay and given that the pricing might have happened during the quarter and would not have fully affected all three months uh do you think uh, there is a, a basically a, a spillover impact into q4 i mean you have taken the pricing let's say in november december uh, and it will come fully in q4 so this 8 to 10% price increase would work out to how much in uh, q4 on account of uh, that as of now it should remain pretty much same so we had roughly around 10% so we can look at a slightly increased number of you know 12 or 12 or 13% or maybe more in quarter 4 uh, but also we must uh, understand that uh, the price increase should have some negative impact on the quantity or the volume understood understood and uh, you mentioned earlier that you are budgeting a slight uh, decline in the margins uh, for fy23 uh, was that with reference to gross margin or ebitda margin 
So we are not. Uh, I did not mention anything on the margin side that we are planning a decline, but definitely there will be pressure as far as the cost structures are concerned because we are seeing a very high inflationary trend. And uh, so far, we have already taken a uh, you know seven to eight percent, ten percent price increase, and there is a limit up to which the customer can also sustain that level of price increase if it continues to keep rising. So there should be pressure, but as of now, we are not building in any you know decrease in the margin because our thought has been that whatever is the uh, you know the normal pricing, we will pass it back to the customer. Understood. So basically, uh, your high single-digit uh, margin, which was a normal in the pre-COVID times, uh, we should be uh, targeting that kind of uh, margin for FI23, assuming that there is no COVID disruption. Yes, absolutely. I think we should still run for that. Okay, understood. That's all from me. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sabya Sachi Mukherjee from Centrum uh, PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, you know, if I look at uh, the numbers uh, uh, and compare with uh, the pre COVID uh, quarter of December 19, that is the QFI 20, so you clocked around, you know, 562 crores kind of revenue numbers uh, in December 19. And now, if I remove the unlimited piece of the business, so I look at the only standalone Vmart stores, uh, that uh, translates to a revenue of 574 crores. That is hardly a 2% kind of a jump over two years. Uh, despite uh, almost, you know, 16-17% uh, kind of an increase in uh, retail area or, or, or store count. Uh, so, so how do you, I mean, explain this kind of uh, weakness in in store throughput? So, Sadhusati, uh, there is a negative uh, SSG of minus nine percent, which I mentioned in my opening remarks, and uh, definitely we are still, or the business is not definitely out of the woods. Uh, there have been challenging times. The quarter or the entire period has not been, you know, absolutely uh, on on full capacity, but. I think the way things are looking up now and uh, uh, what we are seeing currently, I think we are we should see uh, you know uh, much more normalcy coming in in the future. Uh, just a follow up to that. So is this so? Lalitji also mentioned mentioned about you know um, uh, slight pressure in uh, in semi urban and rural markets because of uh, you know limited uh, um, inflation and also affordability issues. Uh, so, so uh, and, and if I if I just compare with the urban peers of us, they have actually done much much better than you know uh, uh, what we have done. So, uh, when do you actually see this rural or semi-urban kind of demand uh, coming back to you know what we used to witness uh, a couple of years back? And uh, second thing is. Uh, you also mentioned about the volume decline that you are planning on the FI23. So, what is the kind of quantum if you can show us? So, Sadeh Sachi, uh, uh, the situation on the ground right now looks positive. Uh, as I said, the, the, the inflationary pressure will be there. Similarly, I also said that you know the job market is very well. The, the 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 crops uh, agricultural crops can can uh, looks to be better the rain crop and the the further the the outcome which is going to come in so if all those continue to be on the better side with the election bringing in more money I hope customers should get back their uh, their money they should come back to their normal consumption we hope that to come in from the first quarter of next year and 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 that that's what we suppose it should it should be. And, and 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 not that we are targeting any volumetric growth, but we, we we wanted this to understand even from people like you and we uh, need to call from various economics. What happens in a, in a scenario where the price rise is so high? In, because in our history we have not seen such a high price rise in the commodity uh, cost, and which is increasing almost uh, 12 to 15 percent of the of the cost of the apparel. And if that 15 percent rise in the apparel cost may give give rise to a little quantity of degrowth in the customer at a like-to-like -like store level. We are not saying at a company level will degrowth. At a like-to-like -like store level, we are a little cautious on that approach. We are 
still we are very watchful we would want to increase our volume but if there is a situation where consumption or, or gets affected because of the price rise we should not end up with a high inventory that's the whole uh, analogy that uh, i am just trying to give you okay okay uh, that's that's um, um, uh, good to hear uh, thank you thank you that's all from my side thank you the next question is from the line of tejesh shah from spark capital please go ahead uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, my question is an extension of the previous participants questions that uh, recovery and overall uh, growth uh, seems slightly sluggish or underwhelming uh considering that uh, three drivers that we always called out winter wedding and festive season all three were uh, packed in this quarter and then considering the pent up demand was also there uh this this uh, recovery looks slightly sluggish but you called out that the recovery in rural was weak so we have now a very decent base of 155 store coming from tier 1 tier 2 city so is it that within our uh, bucket of urban store recovery was way way better than what we have posted and overall numbers so yes uh, uh, first of all uh, the the wedding winter everything is in the second half of this quarter so q3 if you divide q3 the first half and the second half and the first half was largely festival and within the first half the festival which is especially in the eastern side of the uh, of the of india which is durga puja that didn't have, have, have we had didn't had a great time because still there were restrictions and there were no puja pandals and so so that part of the business suffered a lot during this quarter but otherwise i think uh, uh, the, the 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 second half of the festival or the second half of the quarter was very good except the last one last one or two weeks of december where once again only given started hitting us but yeah uh, uh, what i believe that the way i mean you are right uh, the urban city we have seen a better response uh, but our definition of tier 1 still is not those pure metro and pure bigger city our definition of tier 1 is all state capital so so that is how we define our tier 1 yeah but still i think out of the lot tier 1 did had a better result uh, comparatively this is this is true so lalit ji you also made a remark uh, in your opening statement that uh, fy23 should be one of the best year in last 3 4 years so is it you are seeing that kind of recovery already on ground or is it just uh, we are hoping that uh, on on a base that we have created in last 3 year things should be better so tejas uh, uh, i mean recovery uh, happens in not not immediately but yeah, as i said the sun is shining and we could see a clear sky i mean that and then when i say that there are there are symptoms and there are signs that we could see and there are calculations that we could make so hamara to kaam yahi hai na urdi chiye ko par dinna so we will we keep doing it uh, but but we will definitely understand we we'll wait for the situation to come in but we are confident that it, it has to come in the whole calculation definitely leads us to towards that sure and uh, lastly on urban competition uh, so uh, tier 1 in, in your case so uh, uh, let's say uh, a brand like zudio is now penetrating in, in areas like uh, population of 3 lakh 5 lakh of ujjain or or bankura uh, are you are you seeing heightened competition from a very new set of national champions rather than regional competition that we used to fight earlier Now you're right, Tejas. Uh, definitely, all these new national so-called conglomerate-led uh, uh, competition is heightening, and there's a lot of penetration both from uh, the Reliance as well as the Zudio or Tata, and and also Pendulum. So, so they will they will continue to uh, come in, and there are they are now available in most of the towns, uh, especially Reliance Pen, and we will see more of them. We will see definitely. Uh, more of Zudio, more of them, and 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 we still believe that there is so much of room and there is so much of consumption there, which is bound to grow. Uh, but we have a, we will have all have a good time. Sure. And last one, uh, uh, Anand, uh, in, in your opening remarks, you spoke about uh, expanding unlimited. If I heard correctly, expanding unlimited this year uh, in south and west. So uh, west uh, is it a new addition to our plan, or was it uh, just a uh, just a broader remarks you made so they just uh, unlimited already exists in uh, west we have a reasonable presence in maharashtra 
and uh, also in Goa. So we will continue to expand unlimited stores in the existing territories, which includes uh, APTS uh, as well as uh, you know Tamil Nadu, Kerala, uh, you know Maharashtra, Goa, all of all of those territories. Sure, but under the previous owner, they were also not confident of unlimited having very strong value proposition in West India. That's why they were focusing on South. So, are we seeing any revival there? Or? So, it's not we have not uh, identified that exactly. This is the location that we are going to open into. But uh, you are absolutely right. We will we will definitely do our full feasibility and understanding as well uh, a normal VMart store, and then only get into that location. Great, that helps. Uh, thanks on all of this. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit uh, Kundu from Antic Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, so, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a very strong reason. Uh, my first question was on uh, there has been an uh, increase in depreciation as well as interest during the quarter. I believe that would, would that be because of the uh, rentals coming back? I mean, uh, the increasing rentals. Uh, would that be the uh, reason? I mean, well, first question is that. So, the increase in depreciation is because of the, you know, the inclusion of uh, uh, the unlimited source and the impact of India's 116, uh, which basically, you know, uh, uh, optically inflates the or right. the nomenclature of rental into depreciation and uh, interest cost. So, it's essentially, uh, the uh, the rental. Uh, that's what I was saying. That, uh, because of the rental increase, this two components increase, and that was because of the inclusion of unlimited. Yeah, correct. Is that right? And secondly, uh, you know, uh, now that uh, we work, uh, your product is also available on Amazon as well as uh, Mintra, uh, what has been the thought process behind it? You know? And uh, secondly, uh, typically, uh, you know, what we have seen is that uh, on Mintra, uh, those uh, national brands sell their products where the gross margins are relatively far higher, and hence they can afford to uh, sell it at a uh, you know give uh, uh, a higher trade margin to uh, Mintra. Also, a lot of it is uh, actually uh, the older inventory. So, in your case, uh, what what uh, I mean, how would you? Do you be selling the older inventory or do you be having the whole capital of uh, products available on both these websites? So, Abhijit, uh, your um, voice was not clear, but still, whatever I could understand, I will give the reply. Uh, for us, right now, we are a very, very novice player in, in the digital channel. And we are uh, instant, we consider ourselves instant in that. We are just trying to, first of all, place ourselves there. And uh, and we, we as you all know that we have always believed in honest pricing. Honesty is, is very important. Uh, launching uh, ourselves with not old inventory and liquidity inventory, launching ourselves with fresh inventory, trying to cater to the similar segment, understanding business from <laughs> those digital masters, how to treat those customers, how to deal with them, what kind of product works, what kind of product doesn't work, what kind of marketing works, how to place those products. These are all right now, right now for us learning sessions and we will continue that journey. And this is a journey that we have to go a little longer. This is not the goal of what we do. We, have, we are a good brick and mortar retailer. We definitely want to be better in, in the Omni space. And we will learn from all of them. And that is how we are getting into. We have no target right now to increase the margin, uh, sell a uh, higher price for us only or sell uh, uh, old products. We are continuing with the normal operation. There are some unique assortments that we would want to place but not with those intents. No, got it, thanks. And on the unlimited side, uh, see one you are saying that you have hired an agency which would uh, you know, uh, work on the uh, strength of the brand in the existing geographies. Uh, so that is one part, but uh, uh, any work uh, that you require to do on the merchandising part, uh, I mean, you know, on the product assortment, uh, anything did you find there and, and is some work going on there because, you know, uh, Unlimited was there. I mean, uh, it was, it used to be one brand and they changed it. So it was almost the third phase where uh, Unlimited as a brand had come. You know, so they had started off with Mega, Mega Mart on the brand. 
uh, now so uh, even after doing all these things so uh, you know it was not really working so uh, in, in terms of uh, essentially uh, any corrective measures that you are taking in terms of uh, merchandising uh, yeah yeah so. i'll 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 stop you there uh, so abhijit we are definitely as you you know we have integrated the the buying uh, the buying and the, the merchandising areas have become common and we are definitely bringing in or retaining first of all all the good things that the brand had done all the good products that they had created we are also adding up the uh, the new merchandise new things that we mark for selling and we have started doing that that those lines have now started reaching to the store and we will definitely have a little mixed view as far as the forward uh, coming seasons are concerned and we definitely as you rightly said that, that brand and that those which have gone to multiple transitions we don't want to give them another shot so we are very mindful of all of that okay okay thanks that's it for me thank you the next question is from the line of vp rajesh from banin capital please go ahead uh, yeah hi thanks for the opportunity uh, my first question is regarding the competitive intensity you mentioned reliance and uh, zudio are entering into your market so are you seeing the smaller regional players exiting the market or incrementally becoming weaker see uh, we would not call for smaller players are exiting the market as i said earlier in these difficult times in these challenging times these up up upswings and downswings the smaller players always suffers the most and that is what can happen uh, but they are also as you as you also also understand that there is an entrepreneur sitting on the smaller player and the entrepreneur's ability to create a faster decision the agility that they could demonstrate the understanding that they could demonstrate in the business could also be a good asset that could come in so we still believe and we still feel that they should not go down and but there are some players who are in trouble there may be some players who could get into further trouble and a lot of others can also uh, come out very well so so we would see a mixed reaction but yes these are difficult times for smaller players got it and my second question is regarding the rural markets uh, it seems that you saw uh, less sales from your uh, sort of rural skew markets um, so can you uh, comment on that and what is your view why the rural is not doing well in spite of the continuous good nonsense so as i as i said in my opening remarks as well uh, uh, the k graph that we all talk about uh, there has been an impact Uh, for the smaller players, uh, the smaller shopkeeper has not paid them their salaries. The smaller contractor has not got job. There, there has been a, a relative slowness in that particular market, where they have created some amount of loss. If you compare it with the professional world, the corporate world, the bigger cities, there, where we have all got good salaries in our pocket, we have all received salaries on time, whether we have gone to the offices or not. But for smaller areas. they have to all go out to work then only they get their money so there is a there is a there was a difficulty time difficult time that they all went through and i think th- this is going to get repaired very fast okay thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint we take that as the last question i now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments over to you sir Yeah, but thank you so much, everyone, for being there on the call, and uh, we continue uh, once again uh, uh, doing our best. We we are on the similar track. We have focused very heavily on bettering our processes, bettering our technology, bettering our teams, uh, uh, building better strategic objectives. We are also looking into lot of areas of development as our scale has become bigger, as our uh, size of stores, number of stores have become bigger, as the competitors are becoming bigger. So we are trying uh, definitely working very very well towards all of that. We are very conscious that life is not going to be so simple and not not so easy. So we will definitely find all those challenging times, and we will all overcome jointly along with with uh, with all of you. There is a lot of work that we have to do. There is, we will come back very fast because there is a lot of hunger that all our team members have, uh, and we would definitely want to become the the best value fashion player 
uh, in the in the middle india we will definitely want to become one of the best uh, now uh, 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 retailers offering our customer segment the, the those kind of product lines in the in the territories where we operate so thank you so much for being there patient fully with us and we will continue to make you proud thank you thank you malika thank you isme kali mein kyun dali pro dal do thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf of motilal losol financial services that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines